There's sort of a couple of stories that inspired uh, the book. Um, the first one is my niece, Cora. She's got two mums and she's sort of at that age. She's um, four turning five so very soon. Um, and she's been asking a lot of questions. Mm -hmm. um, why do the other kids at kinder and uh, at um, daycare have um, a daddy picking them up? Where's my daddy? So there's been a lot of questions and um, they all get uh, um, answered very honestly. Um, but also growing up in the 90s, my sister and I sort of experienced that same feeling of feeling different because um, we our parents divorced. Mm -hmm. um, and so having divorced parents wasn't exactly the norm in the 90s. So we were part of like a special support group at school and, um, and it, it was always something that we had to explain. No, 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 my parents aren't together. So um, I, I can relate to that feeling of having a different family unit. So I, I don't want her to feel so, that sort of, um, just that way that we felt. And I want her to understand that as long as you have a family that loves you, that's all you need. Yeah. yeah. Um, actually, you know, despite the stigma um, uh, towards um, families of same-sex um, uh, parents, um, reality is, and research has, has shown, that um, children who are actually brought up in such relationships actually thrive. Do you think that children now that you you've got your own niece as well do you think that um for them there it, it makes a difference whether they've got same-sex parents or not not at all it doesn't make a difference my son has a mum and a dad my niece has two mums and I, I watch them together all the time there is not a difference they're both developing the same they're both equally happy um there's it's nothing it's it's adults that make it yeah. a thing yeah it's not it's like it doesn't affect kids she's you know a fully functioning child with loving parents so it doesn't impact kids. After all, it's up to us, um, the parents, no matter what kind of background you've got. It's how we're going to educate our own, chil our own children to, to accept diversity in today's society. That's exactly right. Hate is something that's taught and we just need to make sure that kids aren't growing up being hateful and accepting each other. Um, I've had people send me messages afterwards, like after reading the book, and like where they've read the book to their kids and the kids have asked, oh, why does she have two mums? because she has two mums, that's how, this, that's how this family is and they just accept that, okay. So it's an innocent question, they get an answer and they accept it. So tell us more about the story of Enid and her two mums. Okay, so it's just, um, it's very a very innocent look at um, exploring different family um, makeups basically. So um, Enid's on her way to school and just looks around and notices that there's kids, a lot of kids around her with a mum and a dad. And so she, and then she looks at her own parents and wonders why she's got two mums and why, why she seems to be different. And then the day goes on and she just keeps wondering about it. And then she looks around and notices that there's kids with single parents. Um, and then there's a boy with two dads and she notices how happy he looks. And she realizes that it doesn't matter what your family looks like as long as they love you. And I think that reinforces it for everyone that's a bit iffy about accepting same sex parents as well, mm -hmm. because like I said before, in the 90s, it wasn't the norm and people may have judged um, people for breaking up and um, being single parents. But um, now that it's so acceptable and so common, it might make those that are a bit reluctant to accept um, same-sex parents to think, oh, hang on a second. Yeah, it's no different to any other family. Mm -hmm. There's single parents, there's anything. There's grandparents, there's um, foster parents, there's step-parents. Mentioning really... grandparents, um, even though Coxstad is definitely not a Maltese surname, you are actually, your family is actually Maltese. Yes, um, <laughs> yeah, my family's from Gozo. Um, we've got Skibrises, Portales, the whole lot. Um, yeah, my maiden name is Shivaras. Shivaras, yeah, not Skibrises. <laughs> no, no, never. <laughs> Um, but yeah, um, my husband's background is um, Scottish and uh, Norwegian and he grew up in Canada and so that's where Skogstad came from. That's where from. it comes from. Yeah. Mentioning Canada actually, if we go back first of all a few months, um, you launched the book in Melbourne. And if I'm not mistaken, you just were just in Canada and you launched the book there. Tell us more about the two launches. Yeah, for sure. So I launched it at our local library um, about a month after it came out. And that was really awesome. I had a lot of people that I knew come along, but also a lot of um, just supportive people with their kids. Um, quite a few people from the LGBT community came um, to support the book. And um, it was a really, really fun experience. Um, sort of helped to spread the word in the local community as well and uh, that was great fun and then um, we were going to visit some family in Canada 
a couple of weeks ago and I thought why not launch it there That'd take the great. opportunity for sure yeah. so yeah so we launched it at a bookshop there and then it, it actually made it to number one um, children's book for, for the fortnight it was only met with positivity at both launches writing a book is something that I've always wanted to do I would love to write a book that has a special meaning to my family for my niece um, for my son as well um, they are both just so wonderful to see like my son's going to grow up knowing that his his cousin is just the same as him they, there's nothing different and that's what all the other kids need to learn because not every kid might know another child that has same-sex parents right. so this might be the first um, introduction for them. First publication are there any others that, that you're planning? I'm working on um, one right now um, following the boy from the story who has two dads right. so his name's Stanley so um, that's the next story that I would like to get out um, and I've got a couple more in the works where I just want to explore um, other stereotypes so um, for example I know that you know there's this pressure from society for boys not to cry, mm -hmm. um, things like that. So I want, I want my son to grow up knowing that it's okay to show emotions, it's actually healthy to show, you, to show your feelings. Um, you know, males can feel depression just That's as right. much as females and there's, there's a stigma in society surrounding that. So I definitely will be bringing out a few more. Now for our viewers who would like to find out more about the book and about yourself, where can they find the book? Um, there's a few places. They can find it on Amazon, on the Book Depository, mm -hmm. Barnes & Noble. Um, they can get signed copies directly from my website as well. Which we will be running underneath here, so Sounds this website. <laughs> um, and um, I've actually gotten it into about 10 or so bookshops in Victoria and a couple in Canada. Very and good. I'll be hopefully um, getting a few in Malta this Christmas. Fantastic. Yeah. So you're going to Malta. Do you plan to launch over there? Um, I would like to do some sort of event um, to get it out there. I'll be contacting the bookshops there.